All right, so today we are going to swap out our carburetor. Um, we purchased a new technology elevated smart carb SC2, the 36 millimeter version. And uh, we are going to put this guy in the place of the old carb. So the first thing that you wanna do is take off your tank you know, obviously disconnect your fuel line, take off your tank. Uh, you wanna take out your subframe lower bolts, which are these guys, uh, I believe this is a six millimeter. Um, be careful taking them out because they do have a little bit of red Loctite in there. So if they're slightly challenging to get out, uh, don't fret, um, just take it nice and slow. Uh, then you want to just loosen these 10 millimeter uh, upper bolts. Uh, and then of course you want to loosen your rear carb boot band clamp uh, because what happens is when you remove both sides of these lower subframes, you loosen this and you loosen your band clamp there, then you can literally just flip the rear section of the bike up just like that. We wanted to leave the stock shock in its place because we wanted to see how much room this really does take. We know that the Smart Carb is physically larger and weighs a little bit more, uh, but how much, we honestly don't know. Uh, so you can flip this up. Um, one thing that you probably wanna do ahead of time as well is you want to find the TPS uh, sensor whip, which is this guy right here. It's this black plug, not the white one that's there. Um, it's this black one and you can literally just press and disconnect. Um, how I'm going to get this fished through here, I don't know, without taking up a tremendous amount of time. Well, all I had to do was just lower the subframe a little bit and that unkinked the, uh, the plug. So for the most part, she's ready to take off. We're gonna get our three millimeter um, T-handle here so we can take the slide off. and your slide should just slide right out. And then we're gonna loosen the front one here. That's nice and loose. And, oh, look at that. So there is a, there's kind of a holder for your, uh, for your oil injection hose. So we're gonna take that out too. We just need to get a Phillips head. We'll be right back. That guy's been removed and we should be able to just pop the carb off. Give it a little bit of a tug. There we go. There we go. All right, let me slide this guy. I think it can come out the top. Maybe, no. There we go. Looks like rear brake line is in the way. Huh. So the oil injection tube is in the way as well. So we will need to unhook that as well. Um, I think I'm just gonna pop this sucker right out of the nipple there and should come out. All right. Well, great. So 
So we're gonna put him right here and we're gonna get this slide and this top off. And then this guy comes off because we need to be able to get to uh, just the cable. Well, okay. Hmm. All right. Well, there's that guy. <clears throat> and so we will be right back. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning here uh, on the cable and make sure that there's no crimps in here. It's a new bike. It only has three hours, but you never know. Be right back. And we're back. Uh, okay, so we learned something um, when we were uh, cleaning the cable and making sure and there was no kinks, you know, and inspecting the, um, the top parts of the carb. What we noticed is that the stock carb had this type of inlet for the cable and the new uh, smart carb had the uh, inlet on the left. Well, that is not going to fit. This guy that came with the uh, smart carb is not gonna fit over uh, the cable here. So thankfully for us, um, and I guess everybody out there that's got one, you can literally just swap them because it's got the same thread pitch and everything. So we're gonna take the, uh, the inlet from the uh, smart carb put it over here and actually screw the, uh, the original carbs inlet onto the new carb. And then voila, there we are. <clears throat> so then we want to fish the cable through there. And it's got these, I haven't seen this uh, in the previous gen uh, cross trainers. Um, but it now has this kind of plastic, flexible uh, cover over it that kind of goes into uh, this. And it's not the easiest to get in there, so we've got our needle nose here, and we're just gonna kind of push this down in there until it stops. It's got a little stopper in there. Uh, and so now, when we pull it, that cable goes over the inlet. And now we can do the rest of the install. So we've got our spring that came with the smart carb. I'm gonna get that on there <laughs> without losing our cable. This washer came with the smart carb and what we're going to do is we're going to put this over that <laughs> all right And then it goes down into here. Now notice the bottom is fatter than the top. Well, similar to your, uh, the slide in your traditional carb, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. I gotta be able to see here. So we slide it down and we need to hook it into there, which I can see in there. You might not be able to, I can see in there. And then all of your pieces go down into the carb. All right, now we're gonna put this demon in there. So notice how there's significantly less hoses um, this is a true ventless and jetless carb, uh, unlike um, its competitor, um, not only based on research, but also a previous experience uh, with the uh, first generation or the, the previous generation of this carb. Uh, so 
looks like it's gonna be uh, significantly less hassle to kind of get this guy in there because it just pops right in. And then in terms of the, uh, the slide, the slide goes in uh, very similarly to uh, the stock slide. Try not to drop it. And then we've got these little three millimeter guys that go in. I'm gonna skip over this because it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now that we have uh, taken the four bolts and screwed them onto the top of the uh, smart carb, you wanna make sure that there's no binding in your throttle cable. You know, I've got quite a bit of play, but I loosened mine up at the throttle side earlier. So my throttle is still there. I'm wicking, I'm twisting the throttle. I'm hearing the slide go up and down. I can actually see it go up and down. I'm not sure if you guys can or not, but so that tells me that we're good. Uh, so what I also did um, while I was, uh, while we were away, I guess, um, I went ahead and I put a little bit of RVT uh, sealant around the nipple where it connects to the, uh, the reed boot. Um, sometimes those can crack or create air gaps. Um, you know, it's only happened to, to us once, but we've read about it. Uh, other people have experienced, so we've gone ahead and done that. Um, we've also reconnected the oil injection line and we will end up putting a very small zip tie on that and finding a place to tie the, uh, the tube to as well, just to make sure that it stays away from the exhaust and melts because uh, there's not a tab or a guide uh, that is, uh, that's similar to the stock carb. Uh, so obviously, now that we've got that on, we want to just really put it together, uh, put it back together. Uh, one thing, maybe I can get around here. One thing that we like to do also is with this boot, you know, the carb cable boot, we like to slide this over and put some zip ties around it. Um, this helps tremendously in keeping it in place, uh, keeping the cable kind of inside of the guide. Um, you know, we, you know, it's got this a little bit of play here, but sometimes it can be pulled out um, if it's snagged and, uh, you know, stick the throttle wide open. And we don't want that. Uh, so anyway, we will, uh, before we get everything buttoned up, we're just gonna put a couple of zip ties here and, um, and then let's get this rear boot on. All right, so we've got this, we've got the carb seated in the front here. We've got it seated in the rear. Um, not too many gaps. And it looks like the subframe is down. Is it snagging on anything? Nope. Okay, so we've got our bolts lined up here. This is lined up. We'll swing over to this side. Uh, the boot is on, nice and snug, and it looks like we can tighten this up. Tighten the, uh, the clamps up, the carb clamps, and get our rear subframe or the lower subframe bolts back on. You wanna make sure that you torque those to spec. I believe those are 35 Newton meters. These top ones are 35 Newton meters, but um, you will probably want to put some blue Loctite on these top ones uh, and 
maybe some red on the bottom ones. Uh, we like to put blue on the uh, on the bottom threads simply because we, you know, we do this subframe thing quite often. Um, you know, we will uh, either accessing the shock or just some general uh, wiring maintenance. Uh, we will remove these bolts quite often. So instead of using red, we're going to use blue. Uh, obviously, you want to get your TPS plug hooked back in. We're going to put some dielectric grease on there before we reinstall it and zip tie it and uh, put the tank on, get some fuel in there and see how it runs. Stay tuned and we will do a, uh, an actual test. Uh, running test with this carb. Thanks for watching.